I'm Miranda Riley, and we have a great show in store for you today, Eagles. Starting off with an amazing human interest story, a news update on the coronavirus, and two special updates on the world of football. We're covering all the bases, so stay tuned. Good morning, Santa Margarita. I'm Cole McKechnie. And once again, I'm Miranda Riley. I don't know about you, Cole, but I'm so happy it's Friday and we have the weekend to look forward to. I 100% agree with you. I'm so looking forward to the weekend. Even though this week has gone by fairly quick since we had Monday off, I'm still in much need of a break from all the tests my teacher's been cramming in these past two days. Do you have any plans this weekend? I am just working this weekend and catching up on my missing assignments. Uh, that's about it. You? That sounds fun. Um, I'd probably be going to the beach with some friends. Um, hopefully, enjoy the weather. It's expecting some rain. rain, yeah, but hopefully, we'll see the, uh, the beach. All that right. That sounds so fun. Now, enough about us. Let's get into some news. As President Joe Biden took office just a few days prior, he's been focusing primarily on helping the fight against the COVID 19 pandemic. He has currently promised to vaccinate 100 million Americans within his first 100 days of presidency. Currently, 17.5 million shots have been administered, primarily focusing on healthcare workers, the elderly, and the immunocompromised. In the United States, the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are approved for us and administered in two doses. However, the company Johnson & Johnson is also working on creating a new vaccine that requires one dose and is applicable for people under the age of 16. In the past week, about a million doses have been given, and if it continues at this rate, every American may be vaccinated by the summer of 2020. Fortunately, we don't have to wait that long until things, to first start, until things can start looking up. Once we achieve herd immunity, things will start looking more normal. Herd immunity is when the majority of a population is immune to a disease, and it is estimated this can be accomplished when 60 to 80 percent of the population is vaccinated. We are hopeful for our future and want to remind everyone to stay socially distant and wear masks when around other people to minimize the spread. Well, I'm happy to hear things are finally starting to look up, and I can't wait to get the vaccine so I can hang out with my friends without worrying about catching corona and spreading it to my loved ones. Same. I'm, I'm getting that vaccine ASAP. Now switching gears, there's a lot going on in the world of football this weekend. So to keep you updated, Dylan Oliver is here to give you all the details. Take it away, Dylan. Good morning. I'm Dylan Oliver. Welcome to NFL <laughs> Championship Weekend Preview. This week, there's only two games and they're both on Sunday, and those are the NFC Championship game and the AFC Championship game. The winners of these two games will meet up in two weeks to play in the Super Bowl. The first game on Sunday is going to be the NFC Championship game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Green Bay Packers. This game will be in Green Bay, meaning it'll be played in frigid temperatures with a chance of snow. The Buccaneers are coming off a win against the Saints last week after playing great defense and getting tons of turnovers to change the outcome of their game. With the win versus the Saints, Tom Brady will now play in his 14th championship game and try to reach his 10th Super Bowl. In order to do that though, he will have to go through the NFL's best offense. This Packers offense really showed how great they were last week when they played the number one ranked defense and still put up 32 points. If this number one defense couldn't slow down the Packers offense, will there be any team that can? I say no, and I think that the Green Bay Packers will win this game and punch their ticket to Super Bowl 55. The second game of the week takes place Sunday night, and it is the AFC Championship game, and it's between the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Bills defense last week was dominant versus the Ravens, only allowing three points. The Bills defense also scored a touchdown themselves with an 101 yard pick six, which was the dagger in their divisional round playoff matchup. The Chiefs had a close, hard fought win over the Cleveland Browns last week, but the Chiefs also lost a lot in their game. The face of their franchise, Patrick Mahomes, got his head driven down into the ground and he suffered a severe concussion and was unable to return to that game. I do not know whether Patrick Mahomes will be able to play this week or not. 
I personally don't think he will, and if he does, he won't be 100%. Against the Bills, your quarterback has to be 100%. It doesn't matter how many weapons and playmakers you have. And for that reason, I have the Buffalo Bills winning this game and going to the Super Bowl to play against the Green Bay Packers. This week is going to be a great week of highly contested football games that should come down to the wire, and all these remaining teams are fighting for the prestigious Lombardi Trophy. I'm Dylan Oliver, now back to the host in the studio. Thanks Dylan, I'm really looking forward to all the games this weekend. Now to keep the spirits high, we have an amazing story to share with you this morning, told by our very own Luke Newman. Let's check it out. My sister Avery is one of the nicest, most enthusiastic and outgoing people I know. But she struggles a lot more than most people do. Unfortunately, Avery was born with Soto syndrome, which is a mild form of autism, making it hard for her to interact socially. While she struggles to interact socially and sometimes struggles with other mechanical actions, she's able to express herself by using technology. Why is Roblox your favorite game? I had to explore different games. Yes, one of Avery's favorite games is Roblox, a sandbox game where people can create anything they want. Roblox is almost a library for different content creators that can create new games that others will play. Avery searches around for hours looking for different types of games to play. Some of these include art drawing, including the 3D drawing that you just saw, and other types of two-dimensional drawing, clip art, and just normal games where she interacts with other online players. My favorite music is uh, the last of the real ones because I get to see the mad dogs perform how they fight the shredder. Why do you like those songs? Because they are AMVs. Oh, do you ever sing them? Well, not all of them sometimes. Hmm, where do you like to practice them? In the car. Unlike me, who's more logical and likes math and science, Avery's extremely creative. She indulges herself in the arts, including graphic design and also singing. Avery uses the songs she hears in her cartoons and sings them to us in her performances. I can't remember the last car ride Avery's gone without singing a song. It's her way of expressing her creativity and how unique and loving she is of the arts. What's your fashion style? My fashion style is dressive because I have a, a, a necklaces, dresses, underwear, pants, and socks, and mismatched shoes. And also, my blonde hair looks super hot. Avery's incredibly unique. Her fashion sense and creativity make her one of the most interesting people I've ever known. Her creative ideas that seem completely out there teach me new aspects and insights on life. I had no idea you could edit yourself into pictures until Avery did it. I didn't even know how to hook up my TV to get YouTube on it until Avery did it. Her technology awareness and sense is incredible and I feel that if she keeps improving on it, and enjoying what she does, she can do something amazing for the world, despite her social barriers. Well, that's incredible, Luke. Thank you so much for sharing a story about your sister. This was actually an assignment in our honors broadcasting class. And Luke did such an amazing job putting everything together. 
editing everything and letting us know about his sister Avery. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you. Now switching back to the world of sports. As Dylan mentioned earlier, there's a ton going on in the NFL this weekend. And for more updates, we have Kellen Levy to catch us up. Kellen, take it away. After four thrilling games, the conference championship matches are finally set. I'm Kellen Levy, and this is The Football Fix. The week started off with the number one seeded Green Bay Packers handily defeating the Los Angeles Rams. Later that evening, the Buffalo Bills surprisingly dominated the Baltimore Ravens 17-3. While the Bills were favorites to win this game, it was expected to be a much closer match. Moving on to Sunday, the Kansas City Chiefs narrowly defeated the Cleveland Browns 22-17. In the second half of the game, NFL MVP and Chiefs star quarterback Patrick Mahomes left the game due to an injury, which opened a window for the Browns to win. Fortunately, the Chiefs were able to hold on. Personally, as a Browns fan, this loss hit hard, but I know the team will be back better than ever next year. Finally, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wrapped up the weekend by defeating the New Orleans Saints. Sadly, Saints legendary quarterback Drew Brees potentially played his last game of his Hall of Fame career. While Brees only ever won one Super Bowl, he'll be remembered forever. Looking ahead to next week, both games seem like they'll be very close. Personally, I see the Green Bay Packers taking down the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Buffalo Bills taking down the Kansas City Chiefs, ultimately setting up a Packers versus Bills Super Bowl matchup. I'm Kellen Levy, and this is the Football Fix. Back to the host in the studio. So, Miranda, are you keeping up with any of the football going on this weekend? I am not keeping up with football. I know my dad is. He's really into watching all the football games. I just come down once in a while, check the score, see what's happening. So, you have two options right now. You have the Buccaneers, who are going to be going against the Green Bay Packers. Who is your two cents on the... Okay, so I've heard a lot about Green Bay, so I'm going to go with them. I think they're going to win. Okay, and then on the other side, we have the Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, I do not know much about either of these teams, so I'm just going to take a wild guess and just say Chiefs. All right, that's a pretty good guess. We'll see what they can do. All right, Eagles, that's all we have for you today. I'm Cole McKechnie. And I'm Miranda Riley. Have a great rest of your day, Eagles, and enjoy your weekend.